Good evening, everyone. Uh, this meeting of the Reading Municipal Light Board of Commission is being broadcast live at the RMLD's office at 230 Ash Street in Reading, Massachusetts. Live broadcasts are available only in Reading due to technology constraints. This meeting was videotaped for distribution to the community television stations in North Reading, Wilmington, and Linfield. The RMLD Board of Commissioners recognizes the importance of hearing public comment at the discretion of the chair on items on the official agenda, as well as items not on the official agenda. We ask that all questions or comments from the public be directed to the chair, and that all parties, including members of the RMLD Board, act in a professional and courteous manner when addressing the board or responding to comments. Once recognized by the chair, all persons addressing the board shall state their name and address prior to speaking. It is the role of the chair to maintain order in all public comment or ensuing discussion. Okay, so good evening, everyone. I'd, uh, a couple of comments. First of all, uh, Colleen O'Brien, our general manager, is uh, out of town this evening, so Amid will be sitting in and representing uh, her. So thank you, Amid. Uh, I'd also like to acknowledge our uh, uh, Citizens Advisory Board representative, uh, Dave Nelson, who's here this evening. Thank you, Thank Dave. you. And Dave Talbot will be the board secretary, please. I'm honored. Thank you. Okay, uh, I don't know if we have anyone in attendance uh, uh, from the public. I don't believe so. If so, they're welcome to comment, but not seeing anyone, uh, we're going to start. I think we'd like to uh, begin with the audit uh, review, committee review. Phil, so yeah. would you yeah. please cover okay. that? Well, you know, the auditors are here. Let me begin the presentation. The audit committee uh, this uh, met before this meeting at 6.30 tonight and reviewed the audit, both the uh, Town of Reading Audit Committee and the <coughs> RMLD Board Committee Audit Committee both met in joint session. Uh, basically, we reviewed the audit and we have actually both committees recommend that the audit be accepted by this, this commission. The Town's Audit Committee was a vote of four to zero. The RMLD's uh, Audit Committee was a vote of two to zero. So, and with that, you can turn it over to Karen and let her make a few marks. <laughs> so, Karen Snow, our Auditor, please. Hi, my name is Karen Snow, and I'm the manager of the RMLD audit. Um, I'm just going to go through the financial statements very briefly. If you have any questions, please feel free to interrupt me and ask me any questions as we go along. Starting on page one with the independent auditor's report, this is where we give our opinion on the financial statements. And on page two, you'll see that our opinion is an unqualified opinion. So in our opinion, the financial statements are fairly stated in accordance with generally accepted accounting principles. Management's discussion and analysis on pages three to five is a narrative overview of the financial statements for the year. I'm going to skip over that and go straight to the financial statements which start on page six with the statement of net position. Um, there are a couple of changes this year. This is the first year of implementation for what's called the Governmental Accounting Standard Standards Board Statement Number 68, which requires Reading Municipal Light Department, all municipalities, to recognize your portion of the Reading Contributory <coughs> Retirement System's unfunded pension liability. So Reading's portion of that on page six, if you look about three quarters of the way down the page under right above total non-current liabilities, you'll see this thing called a net pension liability, $4.5 million, $4,524,000. So that is Reading's share of the town's retirement systems unfunded portion of the pension <coughs> liability, which is recognized for the first time in fiscal year 2015 on the financial statements. Um, the 2014 numbers have not been restated because we don't have any information on prior year net pension liability, so those have remained the same. But going forward, that number will be on the statements every year going forward. Um, the second thing on these statements is you have what's called, under the asset section, you have what's called a deferred outflow of resources. And this is deferring recognition of what you would normally record as your pension expense, because under GASB statement number 68, the rules have changed and you're required to recognize pension expense 
based on when that net pension liability is measured. And since the measurement date of the net pension liability differs from your financial statement date, it's 1231-14 as opposed to 630-15. You have to defer <coughs> recognition of that pension expense and roll it back to last year's recognizing pension expense for what you contributed to the retire to the pension trust last year. It's a very complicated calculation. Um, it's it's um, something that's new this year that we're all getting used to. But in essence, you will recognize that pension expense going forward next year. So in fiscal year 2015, the Light Department actually recognized <coughs> pension expense of about $833,000, which for the first time is different than what you would normally recognize because you normally recognize your contribution to the pension trust as your pension expense for the year. But because of the measurement of the net pension liability, other calculations go into that pension expense. So going forward, um, there may be changes in your operating results in your net income for the year based on how that net pension liability changes from one year to the next. And the biggest factor in that net pension liability change, um, other than you know all the complicated factors that go into an actuarial valuation to calculate that, including mortality and how you know all the how many retirees you have and how long they're going to be retired is the performance of the assets of the Retirement System Trust and the Reading Municipal Light Department's trust. So if there's you know, large swings in market conditions and interest rates go up or down, then your net pension liability will respond and react accordingly. So you will have to recognize those changes every year going forward. So that's a little bit different this year than it has been in the past. Um, your OPEB liability, your other post-employment benefits liability, you don't have an unfunded liability at this point because Reading Municipal Light Department contributes to an OPEB trust fund, and every year you contribute what you are required to contribute to consider um, being fully funded. Now that will change in two <coughs> years, in 2017. Um, right now, you're required to fund that OPEB liability over 30 years. But because they're recognizing the pension liability this year, in two years they're going to change the rules and they're going to require you to recognize the full OPEB liability all at once in two years. So you're going to have another large liability that's going to be on this balance sheet. Um, they're not going to let you do it over 30 years like they have been. So that's a recognition issue on the statement in net position and the statement of operating results. So two big changes that are happening, one this year and one a couple years down the road. Um, having said that, Reading's in good shape. <coughs> its net pension liability is four and a half million dollars. Um, it would be higher, but you've set aside a significant amount of assets in a pension trust, which reduces that liability. So you've made some good decisions to help fund that liability so you're in better shape than you would be if you hadn't have that pension trust in place. And the same thing with the OPEB trust. If you hadn't had those assets set aside, then you would not be in as good a shape as you are. Moving to the next page on page 7, which is your income statement, statement of changes in net position. <coughs> You'll see that your operating income for the year, about halfway down the page, was about $4.6 million, so a good, healthy operating income. The bottom line change in net position after your non-operating expenses and revenues are factored in was $3.2 million. So even with recognizing the GASB 68 pension liability, you still had a $3.2 million operating income, so you had a solid year. There isn't a lot else to talk about on the income statement. Your revenues, your operating revenues were up about 5.4%. Your expenses, operating expenses, were up about 1.3%. Your operating income was down a little bit, um, partially because of higher operating expenses because you're being very proactive about maintenance and getting out there and doing some things that need to be done for reliability. 
Um, purchase power is your biggest operating expense, of course, and that fluctuates based on the cost of power it co for what it costs you to purchase power on the market. So, um, but overall, $3.2 million of net income, so uh, again, a good solid year. Any questions? Uh, I did uh, want to acknowledge uh, Zachary Fentros, who's also oh, Zach, here. Zach, sorry, I yep. should have introduced Zachary Fentros. Yep. He's my supervisor on the Reading Audit. He, so, um, sorry, Zach. It's okay. I Normally, have, Bob introduces us, so he you know, yep. got me all out of whack there. Good. Any uh, other comments or questions? Yeah, the only other thing that, in terms of the audit committee, did discuss is that uh, there will be no management letter. There's no uh, deficiencies in the internal control. Uh, we've been informed. Right. On that, uh, and there are several questions as to different areas where the auditors do look at the internal <coughs> controls. And the audit committee seems to be pretty satisfied with the areas of which they're looking at. And we've right. had, a, you know, there was quite a discussion on the uh, unfunded pension liability as to our ability to keep that going and try to try to fund that as, as we go, depending upon what resources are going forward. And that's a RMLD issue, and of course, a town issue, and yeah. I think the town number was like uh, state 29, wide and 29 wide Yeah, the town's overall unfunded, I think, is around 29 million. Um, RMLD is about 28% of that. So um, they obviously have a much higher unfunded liability. It is scheduled, there's a, a funding schedule for the pension at um, the current assessment rates. They are scheduled to be fully funded by 2028, but Historically, in the past, the state has pushed that funding date back if the market conditions deteriorate. So, you know, there, it's never actually reached the fully funded stage, and there's, you know, every reason to believe that if there were a big downturn in the market again, they would have to push that back in order to help, you know, help the taxpayers who can't afford to pay really, really large increases in their pension assessment every year. Good. So, Karen, I'd just first like to thank you and Zachary. I, this has been a couple of years for me in terms of participating in some capacity with the audit, and I, you know, I think you do a great job of uh, taking a obviously complex uh, topic and thank making you. it uh, understandable and uh, digestible for the for the board. We so try because it is very complicated. This stuff, and we do try. So, thank you. But you know, Reading helps us. The light department helps us when we come to do the audit. Um, Bob is very ready for us. Everything is reconciled. Um, the whole entire staff is available to us. We never have to wait on information. Nobody ever pushes us off. Um, so it definitely makes our job easier that your staff is very well prepared and things are very clean. And if we have a question, we get a very quick response to those questions. Is it like Thank that you, everywhere? Bob. <laughs> Thank you. Is it like that everywhere? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> I could say yes to that question. What's, what's the worst place you've ever been? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not naming any names. Yes. Please, please Especially are you ready another ready article? <laughs> yeah. We're the fifth on that one. Yeah. <laughs> you ready for a motion, Mr. Chairman? Yes, please. All right, I'll move that the RMLD Board of Commissioners accept the audit for the fiscal year ended June 30, 2015, represented by uh, Melanson and Heath. So moved. Second. Okay. Any discussion? None appeared. We'll have a vote. All in favor? Okay. Motion <coughs> passes 5 0. Okay, Phil, you're still on. All right, very good. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you Thank very, very much. much. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah, you too. Appreciate yeah. it. You're, you're welcome to stay. Tell okay. Frank. Tell hey, Frank would, you text, would you text us what the score is? Yeah. Please? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> tell Frank we missed him, but you know, we, we have to do, we, we work without him. <laughs> Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Thanks again. All right. Uh, the policy committee meeting. The policy committee met, I believe it was last week. It was the week before. It was last week. Yeah, and basically we, we worked on, actually worked on three policies, but we're presenting two tonight. Uh, policy 11, which was the policy on summer employees, since we don't have any summer employees, and there's no anticipation of having any summer employees, and that's really something that grew out of the, the 1980s. Uh, we voted that the, uh, we recommend to the uh, commission that that policy be totally removed from the policies and be rescinded at this point. Uh, the other policy that we discussed, the mission just went off, was the uh, policy 12 in terms of the board document dissemination. 
and that's you have in your package tonight with the change with with uh, and we're recommending that the commission approve adopt approve the approve that policy good yep okay so uh, any feedback before we entertain a motion <coughs> I have a quick question um, since I wasn't at the policy committee meeting um, the summer what did that summer program used to be Summer employees used to be something that grew out of the 1980s. Okay. Um, Excellent. Originally, definitely. when we would hire kind of college students to come in and, and do things like, you know, put <coughs> markers on poles, put reflectors on poles, and those types of things. And we put a policy in place so that we, so there'd be no, let me say this properly, no potential patronage. <laughs> and that's why the policy was originally put in place. Oh, the policy is about patronage, not about banning summer employees. It's about well, I think it was a combination of, uh, you know, process for right. applying for the for any position, okay. and, then, and then also, uh, you know, exclusion. So who, you know, for example, I, I believe, you know, commissioners, uh, family members were, were ineligible. So I had exclusions, sure. but also process. I, I think the real driver from from the policy committee in, in asking it to be removed is it had not been accessed or utilized in 15 right. or so years. And, and I guess another piece that was also brought up is some of that may have to do not with you know, the lack of young people looking for work, but there's a fair amount of safety issues with respect to having, right. you know, based on the kind of work that gets done or would need to be done might require people to be exposed to, you know, safety areas with, without having had the requisite back, background. Um, just to ask one more question. Sure. So does this mean we don't, RLD does not ever want to have a college kid or uh, come here for the summer, or is it just Yes, Jane. I oh, think we it have, we have co op yeah, positions that are, are within our budget. Um, <coughs> yeah. My group this year, um, the budget that the board approved um, includes a co op student. Okay. Um, I know historically we've used to do that. And I think <coughs> the plan is to get for succession planning more yeah. uh, co op. Yeah, so this is nothing. Is college students, like college summer? Correct. Yeah, yeah, that, that's a, it's an internship program as opposed This is more summer help, you know, people to fill in when. I guess at a time, Gene. I don't know you may be able to speak to. Back to in those days too. A lot of the processes were manual. I mean, people used to physically go out and read meters. Right. So I mean, if you needed somebody to check a meter, that's where a summer student. Uh huh. And no, that it's that's why I'm. Sure. Great. I guess all I'm all I all I'm getting at is that it's I could see a lot of value in having college students come for the summer, and there's certainly lots of programs that we need promoted, and it's hard to do that. But then it's something you have a kid do, and so I'd hate to see us diminish the amount of this that we do so it sounds like this does not change the no, it does not. The, the possibility of having mm -hmm. young people come in well I, I think that but it's, but it, if we decide that there's uh, an opportunity for doing that we could bring it back and uh -huh. be very explicit about it but I think right now it's been uh, line fallow for sure 10 15 years so but but there's a lot of, as Jane said there's definitely and there's already uh, ex experience with it there definitely is support for and encouragement for formal programs that if someone would come in for a yeah. summer or longer period of time and do an internship with their acquire skills and, and so I, forth. I would like us to see more of that, not less yeah. of it. So I hope yep. that in, in removing this, we're not uh, sort of throwing in the towel and having no. STEM education in our community. Or but this yeah. also moves it to it's a department. It's an operational <coughs> issue, not, not, a, not a board issue. Yeah, okay, yeah. fine. Right. Yeah, we don't uh, need it, to be involved. It, it's right. it's yeah. what you're looking for is in place. This really was okay. very narrowly focused on literally summer help and people coming in to do, as Gene said, some mm -hmm. okay. more routine tasks. But we def there's definitely support for what you're looking Those for. Those co-ops were, yeah, going back 1980s, co-op was, uh, wasn't really heard of. I mean, right. like this one just started to come to fruition. All about the 80s, isn't it? This whole thing is just so an 80s thing. Old, mm. Mm. <laughs> It's your generation it's about the back to the future. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, and, and to Jane's point also, I mean, as with any company, the the, the utilization of internships is is great for succession planning, for you know, bringing in new talent and helping with the, the next general manager could have you know, they could start in the mail room and just work there with the general manager after thirty years. If we had a mail room. Right. <laughs> <laughs> We'll put that on next meeting's agenda. Okay. Yeah. We'll, we'll have a mail room. <laughs> if we had two, then we'd have two candidates. <laughs> That's right. Yep. Okay. So good. Good. Uh, good discussion. Thank you, Dave. Yes. Okay. I'll move that. I'll uh, take the each of them separately. That policy eleven uh, revision two for summer employees be rescinded. So moved. Okay. Discuss. Any discussion? 
that appear? We'll see. Take a vote. Second. Second. Okay. All in favor? Yeah. Motion carries 5 0. <coughs> Move that policy uh, 12, revision 2, be adopted as presented. Second. So moved. Second. Second. Discussion? None appearing. Uh, all in favor? Motion carries 5 0 0. Okay. Anything else, Bill? No, that's it. Okay. That's up for me. Okay. <laughs> uh, so uh, the next item uh, for vote and discussion is the general manager's uh, review and just to give some brief history so uh, as with all positions uh, Colleen O'Brien our general manager is entitled for a performance review and salary uh, merit consideration once a year uh, so whatever we decide upon tonight is effective actually back to July uh, which is her uh, review date and uh, I'd just like to give a few highlights and then I'll uh, indicate the recommendation on behalf of the commissioners and we can entertain any other discussion and proceed to vote. So uh, I think uh, for those who aren't familiar, the, the process is uh, we have a uh, committee which consisted this year of um, myself and uh, John Stempeck and Phil Pacino and we have a very a detailed performance document which outlines several areas of uh, uh, for consideration it, I won't name all of them but safety reliability leadership given the nature of her position uh, also uh, relations with the community with the cab with uh, the board and with the community and of course safety uh, is a huge one as well and uh, part of the process is for each of us uh, including the non committee members to pr come up with a score which is rating all of the various subcategories under each of those headings and uh, the total score was 96.6 uh, when we averaged the ratings from all the five commissioners and it's formulaic in terms of uh, what that translates into her uh, recommended merit increase but before proceeding to that I just a few highlights so I think from the board's perspective uh, you know we've been very pleased in the with the performance this past year uh, there's a, a number of uh, successes that uh, and accomplishments uh, that Colleen has uh, been able to produce uh, I'll just name a few there's uh, as we've heard today there's been no audit findings uh, she's also been responsible for reformatting the, f the financials which has been a, we're working with Bob which has been a huge task but allows for transparency as we discussed in the previous audit meeting uh, she also uh, helped us uh, obtain a $250,000 LED grant and also implemented rebates to the customers uh, in uh, other uh, green initiatives to the town in other towns within our served area. We also had two significant studies, an organizational study and a reliability study, and those we've heard at previous meetings have already been uh, not only approved but have uh, implementation uh, plans in place. And for me, a, a really significant uh, development this year, which is part of the organizational study, is having formal uh, uh, career development plans for each of the job descriptions. So that's really key for retention and also for uh, success and overall productivity here at RMLD. She launched eight comprehensive uh, system maintenance programs. Uh, we've had no grievances or co uh, issues with respect to labor disputes. And uh, I think Colleen's provided a real leadership role in terms of uh, the uh, compliance and regulatory uh, side of our business, which is which is very important. So um, I think uh, certainly f in terms of the board and the relationships that uh, we have with Colleen and the staff, I think it's been great. So all of that <coughs> is really to lead up to uh, our recommendation. And uh, as I mentioned earlier, it's formulaic. So uh, based on the <coughs> Colleen's uh, achievement of the 96.6 uh, she's entitled to uh, an increase that's made up of the CPI uh, which Bob will calculate specifically uh, uh, it's somewhere in the 1.3 to 1.7 range but it'll go back to the date of her uh, review and a plus two percent so it'll be three point something percent for for merit to, so that is uh, one piece uh, contractually uh, based on performance and evaluation of the board Colleen is also eligible for a consideration for a one-time uh, performance incentive and uh, after discussion and I, I, sh I should also mention uh, Colleen is also uh, 
outlined and detailed about a million and a half dollars of combination hard and soft cost savings for RMLD during the performance year, which I think is terrific. So the board uh, it would also like to recommend a 3% uh, one-time payment, which would go into, uh, into her uh, ICMA uh, retirement account, and that also would be part of her review and uh, salary consideration. So um, I'd like at this point to ask any of the, my colleagues if they have other comments or input uh, before we proceed to a vote. And certainly, no, I, I Dave, would, you're welcome I, to comment as well. Well, I do have a comment. Yeah. Um, being a, and I'll speak for myself as a CAB member. I think Colleen and her team here has moved RMLD very forward. Um, they've done a great job. I mean, I was looking at the FY15 accomplishments memorandum that she sent around, and that's a lot of stuff. Yeah. And I can say, having been on the cab for three years, now going on my second three years, I mean, I've been part of a lot of this, and I've seen how she operates and how your team operates, and I think they've just done an excellent job, and I think RMLD is going in the right direction. So I agree with everything you're saying. So just want to let you know that. Good. Great. Thank you, Dave. Uh, other commissioners? Uh, I would echo uh, for what uh, David said as well as what you've said, Tom. Um, and we mm -hmm. we went through all the uh, criteria, and I think you've included uh, all. But I would the only thing I would add is I think that uh, Colleen has done a superb job in uh, continuing effort to raise the level of professionalism of the entire organization, and uh, that's not an easy task to do in any organization. I I, uh, I commend her. Uh, for doing that. I agree. Yeah, I'd like to uh, make one comment too. One of the things I've noticed, I've only, I'm one of the newer board members just being six, seven months around. I've noticed that uh, Colleen and her staff are willing to shine the lights on problems that need to be fixed and addressed and uh, don't shy away from um, uncovering those things and tackling them with uh, vigor. So I, I agree with everything that everything's been said so far as well. Good. Normally, uh, Colleen, of course, would be here to, uh, to hear uh, the feedback uh, in addition to our communications with her Amid, uh, since you're in the chair this evening, I'd ask you to convey our appreciation and uh, she thanks. She extended her appreciation and gratitude to the board members for good. Uh, a good performance evaluation. Good. The whole process was great. Thank you good. on her behalf. Great. I just add a few words that you know I, I agree with what everybody said I mean you know Colleen has, has hit a lot of the problem areas and my advice to her in the committee was keep going yeah. <laughs> keep going yeah. yep. there's still more to be accomplished thank you yep. thank right. you for your support yes, yes. Mm -hmm. appreciate it. you all appreciate it Jane and myself and, mm -hmm. and just to pile pile on if I may <laughs> 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 yes yes um, so yeah and, and I think long term we're gonna see big benefits from a lot of the grid modernization yes uh, getting good technical geographic mapping of the grid, these kinds of things that we don't think about a lot. But when this, these things get done and IT systems get installed, we're going to see a lot of opportunities for savings, for, for uh, reduction in, in uh, cost and a peak ability to control peaks. And these things are really important. And, and the more we can do, the more we're going to prepare for big changes in what it is to run a distribution grid, as you well know. So the, the, these work was long uh, needed <coughs> and is now being planned and done. And on top of that, to the point of new uh, technologies, you know, we, we've got several programs to try to put community solar, starting in Wilmington and also in, in Reading and other places. And, and this is great. I mean, this has been talked about for a decade, maybe, and now we actually are seeing some sketches and some proposals and some actual movement. And a lot of people. You know, even though it's only a small part of the of what what we use, I think this, the message that sends, and if kids see this getting built and they learn about, uh, you know, the f the future and they learn about a cleaner energy production is invaluable, and so it's just great. And I'd, I'd love to see this, especially at the school, so kids can. It's just a great moment. The teachers can explain to them what this system is, how it works, the materials, the systems, yeah. the engineering, <coughs> the economics. It's all right there in the parking lot. So hopefully, with that, uh, I'll, 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 uh, job well done, Hamid, for calling. Thank you. Yeah. Good. Thank you, Dave. Okay, so I'll uh, entertain. I'll what, are, what are the numbers? It's CPI plus what's what's the number? Uh, so uh, it's CPI plus two percent. Plus two percent. For uh, her, okay. her merit increase, and then a one-time, yeah. one-time three percent incentive payment, 
uh, for deposit into the ICMA right. retirement account okay. for uh, so extraordinary I'll, I'll results. Move that effect, it's effective July 1st. If I got the if I got remember that correctly? Right. Yes. Effective July 1st, that the commission uh, raised the uh, salary of the general manager to uh, include the increase in CPI plus two percent and an additional three percent to go into the ECMA fund. Second. Any discussion? None appearing. We'll take a vote. All in favor? Okay. Uh, five zero zero. Motion passes. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. Okay. Great. Um, Phil, are you going to carry yeah. us home with the last right. uh, motion? Yes. Now let me get. Actually, there's the first three uh, minutes. Um, Dave Hennessy was not here, even though I'm sure he agrees they look wonderful. I do. I do. Do you have any <laughs> questions on those two? So I, I will make a motion that we approve the June 12, 2014 minutes, the November 6, 2014 minutes, and the January 29, 2015 minutes as presented. Uh, so I'll group those three together, and the other two yep. will go. Okay. Since. Second is okay. Any discussion? Then appearing, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Uh, Dave has to abstain. Yep. Since he wasn't Motion over. carries 400. I'll move the, uh, that we approve the March 26, 2015 minutes and the May 14, 2015 minutes as presented. Second. Okay. Discussion? None appearing. All in favor? Motion carries 500. Thank you, Phil. Okay. Uh, I think we're ready to meet for the general manager's Boy, report. Thank you so much, and thank you for uh, the performance review that you have to call in. It was wonderful. Appreciate it. You're welcome. Well, uh, this year's, uh, we're going to start with this, the, the annual report. This year's RMLD annual report for the first time is uh, going to be all electronic. It's going to be uh, available on the website, uh, RMLD's website, for people to access. For those people who do not have, have electronic access, what uh, we're going to have a few copies available in the lobby, uh, as well as we're going to have a few <coughs> copies available for the Town of Reading subsequent town meeting uh, for, uh, their, uh, for the report. Uh, the report, uh, for the first time, I it was done completely in-house, including the artworks. And by having that done by employees, uh, that represent basically approximate savings of and uh, $9,700, uh, $7,000 for the cost of producing the report, and about $2,700 was uh, generated, actually, that's avoided cost on paper production. Mm. So total together, we saved $9,700. Uh, the town uh, reading subsequent town meeting is scheduled for Monday, uh, November 9th at 7.30 which Colleen is going to be presenting the highlights of the fiscal year 2015 on the theme of peak performance, which uh, will last approximately 15 minutes. Uh, Colleen has also met with uh, two of the town managers and one of the town administrators uh, to schedule the selectment updates. As you are all aware, we, we made a promise that we're going to meet twice a year with the, the selectmen in every community to give them updates on RMLD's uh, performance and uh, uh, accomplishments. Uh, so uh, we, we met, we, we, she has met <coughs> with three of the, the town ma managers and the town administrators. The last uh, one, the last town administrator, I believe that's town Reading, uh, it's going to take place in uh, North, Reading. Reading. North Reading. Yeah, North Reading. Uh, the last town administrator meeting will be take place uh, in, no in early November. Uh, so, and then we're going to start scheduling these once uh, we reach an agreement in which they are going to be uh, doing it in each, each community, which night. Uh, I guess that's it. And Colleen has taken a well-deserved couple of days off with, uh, uh, to spend time with her daughter in military. She's in Florida. And she, again, she wanted me to express her gratitude and appreciation uh, for, for the board's acknowledgement of her performance. And, uh, she, and she's appreciative of the RMLD's accomplishments that a true team is forming and RMLD will remain competitive and successful to meet the challenges of uh, electric utility industry. Great. So, well, Thank you. That being said, I think that concludes the manager's report. So any questions for Amit? Yeah, the only thing I have on the uh, town meeting, right. it would be great if, if the, the overhead that's in behind you, if you could actually have the link to the annual report available on that. So oh, sure. 
so that's a great idea so yeah sure the link to that the site to yeah that. yeah, many, yeah for many sure people now actually don't even bring the i've noticed lately that people don't even bring the paper they just yeah. log on yeah. Yeah. directly mm -hmm. if they could get yeah. the password yeah. that's a good yeah. idea very good idea yeah. so sure we'll make, we'll, we'll make we'll make right good good suggestion good yeah. okay you thank you Amit. you're welcome jane will you uh Give us the power supply sure. report. Um, this is the power supply report for August and September. I've got three slides for August and three slides for. Uh, okay. Can we shut the lights? Can we shut shut yeah. those lights well, off? Can you shut the lights? Yeah. You probably shut these off. This one right here. Yeah. yeah. There you go. That, that's good. You got it. Mm -hmm. Um, the first graph, we looked at energy purchases versus sales uh, for the month of August going back uh, 2013, 14, and 15. Um, as you can tell with both the purchases and sales, the sales is a lag because of the billing cycles. So um, August sales really reflect half of July and half of August, depending on when the cycles are run. Um, so it fluctuates based on weather um, this past 2015. Uh, our purchases were up approximately 10% of what we purchased on the wholesale side, 14 versus 15. So we had a very good summer in terms of sales and purchases because of weather related. Um, the, next, the next graph looks at um, our energy costs versus what our fuel charge adjustment is. Um, the orange graph, difficult to see is the first graph uh, or the first bar chart um, and that is reflective of our costs <coughs> and then the, the, the second uh, bar or the side bar is uh, reflective of the fuel charge. Um, we have a deferred fuel cash reserve that we use to try to stabilize those prices so that there's not huge spikes to our customers um, and that's been down and uh, as I mentioned I think at the last meeting our overall fuel charge has dropped when we compare it from one fiscal year to the other. And that's a pass through our customers, um, and so they receive those savings. Uh, the final August graph reflects the peak demand. Um, our peak demand uh, this year went up from last year. As I said, our purchases went up around 10%. Uh, the peak was uh, 153.225 uh, megawatts. Um, our all-time peak occurred in 2006, and that was 170 megawatts. So we were down substantially <coughs> on, on our peaks. Uh, when you compare it to an all-time peak, that's related to the economy, the customer base, as well as efficiency measures, um, and some just good habits of our, our, our constituents. Uh, if we look at our September charts, our, our peak demand for September, um, we actually, September was another good month. The first two weeks in September were considerably hot. We had more cooling degrees uh, this year in 2015 than we did um, in 2014. There was 164 versus 120. Um, weather is a driving factor for our electricity sales and our purchases and our peak demands. Um, this graph looks at transmission costs, and if you can see the trending line, those are going up. Um, those, on average, go up around 6 to 10% a year. Uh, we're part of the ISO New England's grid and all the transmission costs are socialized through the six New England states. Uh, the only thing we can do to, to manage these costs is our managing our monthly peak demand. Um, and so all of our, our rebate programs and are structured and designed so that we're incentivizing peak reduction. Um, so hopefully that will help levelize that instead of just escalating that up. But they will be going up significantly. Um, and this, this final graph looks at um, July for the first uh, quarter of our fiscal year, our, our energy costs, um, from, and we compare 2013 to 2015. Um, Colleen wanted me to let everybody know um, that she's scheduling the meetings with the selectmen in the towns, but in 2017, as she's been talking about, uh, capacity is um, forecasted <coughs> to increase significantly. We've unbundled our rates to show the capacity and transmission uh, on a standalone line versus the energy. Um, that's a pass through to our customers, but there's gonna be significant increases. Um, if it, part of the financials that we do, we look at a six year plan. So based on the current six year plan, it looks like on a seven to 9% overall increase for our customers. Um, we'll be fine tuning those numbers when we begin our fiscal year 17 budget process um, early 
uh, January, February of 2017, and Colleen plans on letting the town managers know so that they can input that information into their town budgets. Do you have a question? Um, yeah. Jane, uh, when, uh, when you do present that data, is it possible to present what National Grid and Eversource are going to be doing as well? Sure. I think that'd be very helpful yeah. as a relative uh, measure. Yeah, and it's difficult for people to understand that because when you're used to just having stable costs and you have no comparison, it looks e extremely high, but when you put it in context with what other towns are playing right. that are not municipally owned, uh, there are significant I'd be happy to do that. Thank you. Good. And that could be very important. Oh, good. And I assume, uh, Jane, as usually happens, the board would get a preview and yeah, the provide board, feedback. Yeah, the board gets those. Um, yeah. Then we meet with the CAB. I think they get them by March 30th. We usually meet with uh, the CAB in April. Right. And then we meet with the board in May, um, and they're effective July 1st. Yep. So we'll be, we'll be having discussions with them. Good. I have a question. Yes, Dave. 153 was the peak? In August. What day, what day was oh, that? Uh, I believe it was a Tuesday. So um, did we activate a plan that day to try to knock that peak back? Remember we have a communications plan? Yeah, we, we actually have our, our peak demand reduction program. And, and so our commercial customers that were uh, uh, in, signed up for that program were notified. Um, and we estimate that we received anywhere between about a little less than a megawatt worth of reduction. Um, the, the tricky part with our peak demand reduction program is because um, a lot of it isn't automated and it requires people to actually do things. Mm -hmm. um, there's some reluctancy because costs are currently low. Um, as they're going to be increasing significantly from, from, uh, from the standpoint of capacity and transmission, those savings are passed on to the customers. So it, it, we're, we're kind of fine-tuning the program to educate our customers so that they can see the actual savings and that gets reduced, reduced uh, directly to their bill. So that more, I, I take what you're saying that that morning there was an awareness that that would be the day. That might be uh, a there, likely. Well, there's several days during the month because there's no way to know exactly the day. Sure. Uh, we, there was probably during the July, August period, there was probably six to 10 days that we called um, for peak reduction mm -hmm. because you thought that, that could be the day. It, yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay, so but weren't we developing a plan to mass uh, a mass communications yep. out to like everyday people, not just the big, not just what you're describing? Right. Um, I think the the issue with that is uh, we we want to make sure we educate our customers so that we're not telling them to just shut things off but we're, we're trying to develop that campaign so that they know why they're doing it and the benefits to doing that um, our customer service group has done a fantastic job we have over 16,000 emails yes. um, and then we are actually in my group filling a position who will be responsible for that to, 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 sh to send that out to send emails out Correct. so the question I always have is why we're not on social media to alert the various groups of people who are on Facebook pages or uh, Twitter. This is the way everybody gets information now. It shows up on their smartphone and, and it happens right away. So why, why don't we do, we, we don't do that at all, right? We don't have a, we don't tweet, we don't have a Facebook page, we don't communicate on Facebook, we don't do any of that stuff, right? Not curren currently, no. We're not. Is there a reason, is there a reason uh, why? I think, I think uh, we, we've had discussions, we've met with other municipalities who have, uh, Shrewsbury's a good example, they're very active on Facebook and, and Twitter. Um, the one, uh, I know some of Colleen's experience in Danvers is when you have that Monday through Friday it's good, and then when things happen on the weekend, if you don't have the correct person assigned that task and something occurs, people's expectations are, they're looking to their Twitter account, and if, if we don't have the resources internally to, to do that, that, that's the problem. But, so, but the peaks are always going to be on business days. Correct, the peak. But again, people use Twitter for outages, and, and, and it's a whole communication plan in terms of it's just not the peak demand reduction. Can we hire a college student to do that, you think? We just got rid of the policy. <laughs> <laughs> can't do that anymore, John. We'll be right up there, Alex. Nice job, John. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I, just, I feel like, you know, sometimes we can overthink things. And, uh, you know, having a Twitter account and, and RMLD tweeting out things that it wants the community to know 
And then what happens is people follow RMLD and then they retweet things if RMLD says, hey, this is the day, could you please shut off your AC between four and seven? Yep. And people retweet it and suddenly you've reached several thousand people and it didn't cost you a dime. And I, don't, I guess I still don't get why we don't at least do that on all the talk we've had about the peak, why, we don't, why don't we do that? I can bring that back to Colleen. I know they yeah, I think that's the appropriate. And I think yeah. it's a great yeah. idea. It's just a matter of having David, I think what resources? Map. It's just a tweet. It's not resources. Yeah. It's just a t it's just tweet. Yeah, I think it's a great idea, too. Yeah. And I, yeah. you know, I, it's I not a know. It's, that's what I'm saying about overthinking it. Like, okay, I, I get we need a whole giant communications plan that covers all kinds of contingencies, weekends, blah, 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 middle of the night. Right. But some things aren't that, sim aren't that complicated. And if it's, you know, the hot day is always going to be a business day. You're always going to know that morning uh, this might be the day, and it's a few messages that get put out virally, and you might get something out of that. And it, it's from what it sounds like this year, we got one megawatt out of whatever we did. But we we've heard in previous meetings that if we get a few megawatts, it can be worth hundreds of thousands of dollars. So, I mean, it just seems to me like, I mean, this is where people are communicating and receiving their information now. They're not yep. they're not getting it from press releases in the Reading Chronicle. So. We can certainly uh, look into that, definitely, but it's part of the roadmap for grid modernization that we're going to have IVRs, and with having IVRs, we're going to have more capability to reach out to the people. IVR, I'm oh, sorry. That's Remind it. me. Yeah, IVR is the way that, you know, well, the people, they can uh, yeah, sign in, integrate your yeah, voice response. What does that mean? Which yeah. means that, you know, well, the people, you if they sign, text, you can set up, you can set up, send ta t text messages, you can say, if they choose to receive a, okay, so a this voicemail, is for, right. they send a voicemail, and we can reach out more so people. So you've pre-subscribed them, and there's yes. the whole thing where please exactly. sign up for this yeah. special message. We, but we, we even tried. before you do that, you could do these si yeah. free, simple yeah. things that everybody we uses. We tried already. it in Danvers. I'm just going to give you my own experience uh, with tweeting. At the beginning, we got lots of you know people. They they showed their, their interest to log into and follow up, and then it, all of a sudden it died. You know, they, mm, it didn't just it wasn't well received. Put it this way. Uh, we can try it, obviously, over here. We're going to look into that. But I think uh, receiving emails, I mean, I don't check my Twitter. Um, I, don't, I check m more of my, my, my emails. If you send me an email, you know, it, all of a sudden I know there's something you know, alert, you're, you're something over 30, from though. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> you are? <laughs> well, I, mean, I, I think you probably uh, segregate it by right. large industrial users, right. too, sure. because analog devices uses you know, huge, huge quantities right, for course. making their integrated circuits right. and compared to a residential shutting no, no, off. No doubt. Something. I'm just saying it's, it's totally free. These, these, yes. these, these well, communication channels are free. They take no effort to do a few things in the I morning. I guess we can try it. There's anything. There's, why, why don't I any uh, propose an action item, especially because we'd like the benefit of Colleen's input on the topic. Uh, but I think this has been good. So I think there's a, an interest on the board to use technology sure. to help uh, address you know some of the concerns that we've just been talking about so maybe the staff can bring it back to Colleen so, and, and I think the larger question really is what you know what do we want to do in terms it doesn't have to be any particular medium but wh how do we want to communicate to our customers regarding you know peak times and, and along with the education piece because I agree with Jane uh, you know the prelude and we can look at what that schedule looks like. You want to make sure the customers know, you know, because if we, you know, not that that's what's being proposed, but telling them to shut off their air conditioners, you right. know, probably won't get a lot of reaction. But if we tell them that when they do that, you know, this is what happens to the, you know, the cost of electricity for them and for, and for the town. So I, I can get that good. in 140 characters. I, I, yeah. I will do it. Yeah. I, will, I, I will. think that's good. I think we also need a metric. Yep. Uh, testing it too just to see how effective it is yeah I mean you may not be able to measure it I mean but it's just it seems funny to me that we don't even we don't do that I mean it's a very yep. one-way okay. write the press release uh, you know send out the email but there's a dialogue happening everywhere online with you know thousands of people in the, in the district yeah I, I know I think a little bit is in John I mean the board members all have their own experiences but you know our company's only we're manufacturer so you know that probably equates to kind of a utility in terms of, you know, the utilization of technology. So we have a Facebook page, but it's only relatively new, you know, in the last few years kind of thing. You're so over 32, though. 
<laughs> You're just just yeah, yeah. 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 yeah, but I mean, you have to. So I mean, it, you got to have a Facebook page to put it on your Facebook page, kind of thing. So I think the yeah, bigger I mean, question is, how do we integrate? You know, what's the plan? And I'm sure Colleen has given that some thought, and I, I think uh, it would be good for for that to be a discussion topic. Give uh, me the Twitter meeting. account. I'll tweet the things out. <laughs> or I'm just going to start a Twitter account at RMLD, and I'll send the messages out, and you guys can kick me off the board for. Violating protocol, and I'll send out tweets saying, "Please." No one gets off the board. Adjust that your easy use day. between four and seven. <laughs> right. It's right. not that easy. <laughs> save the community money. You have to screw up. <laughs> save on your bill. You have to Please, do much worse you know. than that. And then the teenager in his room on the third floor. Can, oh, okay, and he'll shut off something. Yeah, right. Really. Well, between you and your two sons, I mean, right we, there that's is a, a whole, megawatt. That's a staff I mean, right there. Dave, I'm sorry, you just bring too much comic relief. We can't let you go. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I'm here for. Yeah. So. Okay, so staff. Uh, we'll, we'll okay. Look into that. Good. Definitely. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 Good point, Dave. Okay, uh, Jane, did you want to share anything else with us? I'm because my best. Uh, Any for questions it. for Jane? Okay. Good. That's, uh, I guess, do you want to light off again or oh, no? Sure. Uh, so, I mean, you, would you put your engineering uh, sure. operations head on? De definitely. Okay. Um, it's on. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm going to quickly go over the uh, report for uh, this month, for, the, for July and uh, August and September. Sorry. Uh, the construction projects, uh, we got the pole line upgrades on Lowell Street, Wilmington, that 82% completed. Upgrade uh, of the low old uh, Linfield Center, Cook's Farm, it's 75% completed. Uh, 4W5, 4W6 tie in uh, Reading, it's 5% completed. And West Street uh, pole line upgrade, which is a forced account that is funded by the state, it's approximately 95% completed. And the special projects and capital purchases, the LED street light conversion is going very well. Uh, we have replaced 672 of 2,450 lights that targeted for FY16 that installed as of uh, uh, October 11th, 2015. And uh, the routine constructions for the month of uh, August, uh, we spent $116,575, and uh, September $141,727. Year to date, that brings it up to $368,276. And the, the routine maintenance, the transformer replacement program, we got Padmont transformers, approximately to date, 13.21% uh, uh, re been replaced. Uh, overhead transformer in that category, we've replaced 10.54%. Uh, For the pole line inspection, uh, we inspected uh, 640 poles in uh, FY15 and FY16, we just completed the 640 pole inspections. Uh, 213 in 2000 FI 2015 uh, were tagged as the ones that they needed attention, with 22 being condemned. Uh, of those, 122 three poles have been replaced, and 90 poles are remain to do. Uh, 67 of those 123 transfers have been completed uh, to date. And the devil poles categories, uh, uh, we got the total of 502 devil poles throughout the system, uh, which the breakdown is in Linfield 41 we got, Reading 135, uh, North Reading 127, Wilmington 199, and uh, Reading has done 52 transfers. Uh, that's, that's pending for transfers. Otherwise, uh, the rest is uh, Comcast and uh, Verizon in order to... Um, do the transfers. A visual inspection of the overhead line, that's another maintenance program, and we have inspected the uh, circuits, uh, the 5W8, 5W9, 5W5, 4W10, 5W4, 4W28, uh, 4W5, 4W6, 3W8, 3W18, and 4W13. These are the circuits that were patrolled, uh, so, and we have found no problems. Routine maintenance, we got uh, manhole inspection that we are doing, that's continuing and going. Uh, the main, on the main roads, they're pending. However, in the communities like Cook's Farm and the, or, or the URDs, that, the, that is ongoing. Uh, porcelain cutouts uh, replacements, we got 90% completed. We got 270 remaining to be replaced. The tree trimming is going very well. well. In the month of August, we did uh, 288 spans. In September, we got 320 spans. And year to date, that brings it up to 920, 
five spans. The substation maintenance, the infrared scanning for the month of August and September did not show any major trouble or problems in those substations, so uh, the things are going good. Uh, the next slide is the reliability report. As you could see, that the reliability exceeds the regional and local indices. That's because of the storm activity that we had on August 4th and 5th, that we get approximately 3,000 customers out for extended period of time. That's very unusual. They were out for close to 22 hours almost, um, some customers. And that's what drove the, uh, the that's what drove the number really above the regional and, uh, and national averages. Uh, you see the, the boxes, the, the shaded area or the, uh, the hollow area, the white uh, box on top of the uh, colored one. Uh, that shows with the numbers, with this storm uh, uh, the statistics, and the, the one below shows basically that without, if there was no storm, we would be well below national and the regional average. Uh, so the way that I compare these charts is like to your blood pressure, that you know, well, you know, it goes up when you get excited <coughs> or you go to the doctor's office all of a sudden or you got, uh, God forbid, major you know, bad news or something, you know, it goes up. But uh, throughout the, the day, the rest of the day, the rest of the normal time, yeah, your blood pressure is average or normal. So uh, one storm could uh, throw off these numbers really uh, to the higher, highest extreme. Mm. Was this mostly trees? Uh, these are mostly trees, yeah. We got the, we got the, the uh, tree damages on Main Street uh, in uh, Linfield and uh, the Lowell Street as well. So those heavy trees that brought down the circuits, we lost three major, three, three feeders basically that feed the entire Linfield area, mm. as well as some damages in the Reading area. Uh, we didn't have much going on on North Reading and Wilmington, but these are the areas that the microburst went through the town and took everything <coughs> basically, <coughs> brought down everything, all the lines. So, uh, so this, that's for the Sadie and Katie and uh, the safety, the same thing. The safety also uh, was, uh, it was under the below the uh, national average and regional, even with the storm, uh, which that's the average uh, frequency of the outages that the customers, they experience throughout the year. So uh, under the categories of the number of outages, you see the most of the outages uh, that they were experienced uh, for, the past, for the past five years, basically. Uh, it's been, uh, mostly trees and the breakdown of the equipment and the wildlife, which we got programs in order to uh, make sure that you know, they stay under control. Uh, the tree trimming, we revamped, and it's a good program now with uh, cutting back to eight feet. The wildlife, we're installing more wildlife uh, to the exposed the parts of the uh, apparatuses and pole, and, uh, as well as covering the, some of the underground and also for the equipment uh, with the transformer replacement program, we are hoping that you know, that would go down and also replacing the cutouts, porcelain cutouts. That's a program that was instituted for this purpose in order to get rid of the uh, equipment, the aged equipment that uh, they keep failing. But we got quite a way to go, so. That concludes my report. If you have any questions, by Good, anything from the ready. commission? I have a question. Sure. Um, I'm very interested in the, the intelligence that you're going to be adding to the grid. And when we have the ability to communicate better with individual pieces of equipment, yeah. that you'll be able to see them failing before they fail. Is that one of the goals? Yes. I got good news for you. The first, uh, actually, four smart switches, they're okay. installed. And uh, they're not operational yet. But they're going to be going on, on the SCADA pretty soon program. And that is correct. Uh, what we're going to be able to do, we're going to be able to see if there is any trouble. Uh, there's, there are alarms that are coming up, and they're going to give okay. you a report. And that's going to be paged to your uh, either pager or smartphone. And through there, you know whether some you could predict some something's going on, and mm -hmm. you need to do take an action. Some of that. However, there is another uh, there is another feature of the smart grid. Uh, that is called FDIR, fault detection isolation restriction. 
So if something fails, uh, hopefully once the entire infrastructure is in place, the fault is automatically uh, isolated. The switch before and after they open up and everything else is gonna be closed back to the open point, which means that's gonna take uh, place within seconds, rather than right now, which it, ta it takes hours mm -hmm. to restore, and the number of truck rolls is gonna go down and all kind of savings that's gonna bring for yeah. us. Uh, the reason I'm bringing it up, I had the opportunity to interview the guy who runs the Chattanooga uh, yes. electric utility, Harold DePriest. Yes, I know and, him, yeah. And it, yeah, it's one of the best smart grids in right. the nation. And it, it really blew me away, just the gains that come that, and that he didn't even anticipate. Like, he's eliminated $5 million worth of overtime because yes. wow. he can schedule to fix the, the, the failing piece. Right. Right. Because he knows it's going to fail. He can do it on Friday and not wait till it blows up on Sunday. They have close to 2,000 of those switches, these switches that we installed. They mm -hmm. use the exact same technology that they use, we are using over here. The value is immense in this stuff. The payback yeah. is, is, is huge. So it's great that we're doing it. Yeah. Nice. If Super. you got a chance, if you go to the site called SNC, uh, that's SNC, uh, it's a company that you know makes these switches. Mm -hmm. They have the smart grid report on that that shows you the old way of operating and now the smart way of operating, which shows the difference. The cost savings is a lot. It is really. It's uh, hmm. and they have good video that shows how a smart system works. This system. Good. Thank Anything you. else for Amid? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Thank you, Amid. Bob. Thank you. Come on up. Do you need the lights off, Bob? Report? <laughs> <laughs> so I was waiting for the uh, audit to be approved before you see my financial statements. So they are completed, but you just haven't seen them yet. So I have no slides and nothing okay. uh, to review uh, to, to pass out. But I will give you uh, uh, a quick summary of the first results uh, of the first quarter ending uh, September 30. So net income came in about 1.9 million, which is about $400,000 over budget, or about 25%. So we're off to a strong start, and as Gene alluded to, the, the two warm summer months really helped us a lot in getting off to a good start. Now comparing uh, the first three months to this year versus last year's actuals, Kilowatt hour sales are up about 7.5 million, or about 3.9%. Uh, correspondingly, base revenues are up about $688,000, or about 11.3%. All good news. Um, Expense-wise, expenses are down about $650,000, or about 11%, based on the five divisions. Cash position is, is still very strong. So we couldn't ask for a better start to, uh, to the new fiscal year. Mm. and. Uh, like I said, the, the reports are done. So depending on um, maybe tomorrow, really next week, because we are doing a major upgrade this weekend to our, our uh, software system, our billing and our, and our general, le uh, general ledger systems. So I'll, I'll get those, uh, rep those numbers out to you uh, for you to review in closer detail. But that's all I have for tonight. Okay. Good. Any questions? Good. Thank, Thank you, Bob. You. Thanks, Bob. All right. I think we have some uh, bids. Move the bid 2016-03 for remediation, transportation, disposal of hazardous waste to be awarded to NPRO for a three-year period ending November 30, 2018 for an estimated cost of $150,000 to the lowest qualified bidder on the recommendation of Second. Any, any discussion? Any background? Uh, well, the, this is the bid uh, that, you know, basically for transportation, disposal of hazardous waste uh, material that uh, we had three bidders, and uh, the lowest bidder was uh, uh, the uh, EN Pro for $150,000, basically. One of the bidders was disqualified because they didn't meet the requirements, so there were two bidders, and he was the lowest. So that's a pretty good value for uh, disposal of the equipment. Okay. Ready for a vote? Mm -hmm. okay. All in favor? Okay. Motion carries. Five zero zero. Um, Dave Nelson, did Thank you, you have anything? Uh, do we have some more? Yeah, I just got one thing under the uh, general discussions. I know this yeah. wasn't the agenda. I did attend the CAB meeting. Okay. Uh, the last CAB meeting, just to give you a quick update yep. on that. Um, I think there was there was actually they got a presentation on the lighting program, which I thought was very good. I recommend.
recommend at some point maybe that presentation should be made to maybe this commission too on that and also uh, was it what say that again Phil who presented actually it was uh, what's, what's your name I, I, Tirza Tirza yeah. <laughs> yeah, two people from my group Tirza Shakespeare and Raul yeah uh, Shaw who who work with uh, along with Tom Alilla, uh with our commercial customers and it was our commercial lighting program oh okay yeah Cool. Yeah, that'd be great. It was very yeah. informative, and I, and I recommend that maybe the commission consider you know getting that same presentation. Sure. Okay. Um, Can you follow up on that? Sure. Uh, thanks, Jane. Good. So, and then uh, Priscilla kind of updated on the what's going on in public relations as part of that meeting too. So. Good. Yeah. Dave, did you have anything uh, from your side? Nothing other than what's been said already. Yeah. I just think a lot of good things are happening, and the good. cab's appreciative of that. Of that. And yep keep up the good work so thank you good thank you I, I did I did want to mention uh, for those who were able to attend and for those who weren't uh, the open house that was held here a couple weeks ago Three weeks ago. Uh, I thought it was very successful I know Dave you had a chance to stop by and uh, was outdoors this year and uh, you know, had some electric cars and uh, which you know me and I got to not drive, but sit in <laughs> for a photo op. Uh, but it was very well done. I thought it's, it's a nice day for the communities. I think the town manager came by, and Colleen was a good egg. She got in the dunk tank and uh, gave uh, staff and others a chance to. Uh, she got pretty wet too. Uh, <laughs> so, but all in all, I thought it was a good day. It was a good way to showcase, uh, you know, and and actually a nice day to meet. Uh, that's one of the few Forbes you get to meet the linemen and some of the other people that work here. So I thought that was the same for the community. So I thought it was well done. And Thank you. Um, hopefully they'll do it again uh, and the weather will cooperate because yeah. it really makes a difference. Um, just one. Yes, David. Um, last meeting you, you mentioned, uh, we've talked a number of times about fiber and exploring yes. our, our, our yep. Yep. options. And, and I think, Mr. Chairman, you mentioned that it would be good at least to get some kind of rough idea of what uh, what is possible yep. in the RMLD zone. So there are a number of uh, companies out there that will do these kinds of analyses for not yes. huge amounts of money. Yeah. And I, I guess I just wanted to get the sense of the board of whether this is something we should be maybe get on the agenda to talk about at the next meeting in terms of should we figure out whether we would like to ask for one to be hired um, to for really quite short money to do the kind of basic answering of questions that we have of, well, what is our asset? How could it be monetized? What, what might the market opportunities be? Uh, maybe some that we could think of and others that we didn't think of, such as backhaul to cell towers and other types of uh, backhaul. So I just wanted to, s to, to sort of raise this uh, and see if this is something that the sense of the board, if this is something we might want to explore doing. Um, yeah, I think from my yeah. memory, I think at one of our last meetings, Colleen had uh, and all of us had discussed that, uh, and I know I particularly was in favor of getting some data because I right. don't think any of us have the expertise, right. so we don't know if it's this big or this big. So uh, right. if you have some uh, information you can put together, I think that would be useful, okay. and then we can connect Absolutely. with Colleen okay. and have a yeah. discussion. At the I, I agree. Board. I think we should use an independent outside person to who's, who's experienced yeah. in this yeah. to provide just the data set and some independent analysis. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. Sure. Great. Good sense to me too. Good. Thanks. Good. I'll, I'll yeah. look into it. Good and suggestion. Report back, and maybe we can uh, uh, suggest an agenda yeah. item for next meeting. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Good. Okay. Um, so. Um, I think we also setting up a committee uh, from NEPA. <coughs> that was a very good <coughs> meeting. Hopefully yeah. they'll they'll. So we can other communities are getting involved too. It would be great if that could be moved forward. Yeah, we we never reported on that, but there was sorry to belabor the meeting here, but so there was this meeting that we held to try to get the community together to collectively uh, map our assets and yes. share, formally share information. Um, that would be great too. You got two volunteers. I got you, and who was the other one? I forget. <laughs> well, it was um, a few. There was, uh, yeah, it was Holyoke and- Holyoke, yeah. You, you know, along those lines, uh, I mean, has, have we, has Colleen received anything back from the poll that she sent out to the various towns about Cost and they're spending or on. Did she not send that out? It, yeah, she actually talk, talked to, I guess, Town of Reading they, they was the only one who responded. They said that there is not much savings for them. Huh. That's what I understand because they already got a deal with uh, Verizon or Comcast. Really? Okay, That's well, perhaps next meeting she could yeah. report on that. But yeah. the other towns, then uh, I'm not aware that you're of getting huh. any, anything back. But overall, I didn't know that that went out because uh, I. 
that survey didn't really cover very much. Um, it, was, it was a very short, very yeah, brief it was survey. Short, narrowly version. defined. Yep. Like right. What do you spend on telephone or internet? And that's kind of not what this is about. But I mean, it's, part, it's potentially part of it. But this is more like economic development and helping businesses. Yeah. It's so it's I great think the next step yeah. we've outlined, I think, but is the way. It would be nice to explore other opportunities yeah. and, you know, what, what, you know, what other options are really available. Yeah. Well, this is why I think we felt if we could get some information. Independent study. Would independent, be yeah, yeah. That mm. can give us a, a, a path forward, you know, and chart the, the course, because I, I think we all are interested, but it's, uh, you know, we need some knowledge sure. and information. So good. Thank you, Dave. Uh, so, uh, Gene, I guess we just we have our ma next board meeting the 10th of December. There's no November meeting because we've had a, a bunch of meetings the end of this month and with Thanksgiving uh, following on a Thursday and the timing of getting in the financials. So uh, it's a two, it's a Tuesday. <coughs> no, Thursday. Thursday. Okay. Thursday, December 10th. And uh, CAB meeting November 18th. Do we need any help with that one? Okay. You do need help. Covered. Covered. Yep. Is that a town meeting day? Uh, no. Don't think so. No, that's a Wednesday. It's a Wednesday. 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 <coughs> yeah. All right. You want to check, Dave? Yeah, I can do it. Yeah. Okay. I can do it. You can confirm with Gene just yeah. to be sure. Uh, okay. Um, before we motion to go into executive session, Gene, is there anything else we need to cover? No, I, I do want to have another policy committee. Yes, yeah, I think that would be good so we can continue our journey. Yep. Okay. Bill? They yep. move that the board go into executive session to approve the executive session meeting minutes of June 12, 2014, and January 29, 2015, to discuss strategy with respect to collective bargaining and to return to regular session for the sole purpose of adjournment. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, this needs a roll call revote. Mr. Pacino, aye. Mr. Talbot, aye. Mr. O'Rourke, aye. John Stepnick, aye. Mr. Hennessy, aye. Good. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.